Hi folks, Dave Waring here again with FitSmallBusiness.com and today's lesson of the day. In today's video we continue our series on how to hire and manage with a look at how to design a compensation policy for your firm and some surprising reasons why you may not want to pay for performance. So let's get started. The first thing to keep in mind is that pay is only one component of a compensation policy. In 1959, Frederick Herzberg published The Motivation to Work, which changed the way we think about compensation. In his studies conducted for the book, Herzberg found that there were numerous factors which affect job performance. His research showed that while a competitive salary and benefits are necessary to keep employees from being unhappy with the position, they are not a factor in motivating employees to do better work. His work also suggested that a different set of factors actually motivated people to do a better job. These are things such as the opportunity to learn and grow within the organization, increased responsibility, achievement, and recognition. With this in mind, you should embrace a total compensation philosophy, which focuses on designing a full package comprised of the dollar amount of pay, benefits, and the motivating factors we just listed. In today's video, we're going to cover how to come up with the total dollar amount you pay your employees. In future articles, we will cover benefits and the motivating factors. Step 1. Establish a pay philosophy. The first step in designing an employee compensation plan is deciding what your pay philosophy will be. In this step, you should ask yourself questions such as, Do I want to pay more or less than those companies that compete with me for talent? Keep in mind here that just because someone does not compete with you in the marketplace does not mean that they do not compete with you for talent. Do I want to give a lot of other benefits besides pay or less benefits so I can pay more? How do I want to incentivize performance? Will owners adhere to the same compensation plan as employees? Throughout each stage of developing your total compensation plan, you should test yourself by asking if the plan meets the needs of all three of the primary stakeholders in the company, which are employees, clients, and owners. When thinking about the fairness of their compensation, employees are going to focus their attention in two areas. The first is how much they are being paid in relation to similar positions at other firms. The second is how much they are being paid relative to other positions within your firm. With this in mind, the next step is to find out how much the competition is paying. If you've not done so already, you will need to put together a job description for each of the positions in your company so you can compare what you are paying with the competition. When putting together the job description, think about the scope and major responsibilities of the job, how complex the job is and its impact on the company, the knowledge, skills, and competencies required to perform the job, and the education levels and experience required. Once you have an outline of the duties and responsibility level of each position, then you can go out and find out what others that compete for the same talent are paying. There are three primary ways to do this. First, talk to people within your industry and ask them what they are paying. Make sure you describe the duties and responsibilities of the position so you can compare apples to apples. Second, you can use Indeed.com salary calculator and the advanced search feature at CareerBuilder.com to search for similar positions and find out what they're paying. And finally, look for salary surveys online by searching Your Industry Plus Salary Survey on Google. Once you have your data set, write down a range of compensation levels that are being paid for those positions. Step 3. Set the salary level or per hour rate. As we discussed in Step 1, competitive compensation is necessary for an employee to not be unhappy, but it is not a motivator for higher performance. With this in mind, we generally recommend paying salaries that are in line with the competition. Exceptions to this rule will be if you feel a role is particularly valuable to your firm and warrants paying above the competition, or that it is not that important and therefore you can pay less. You must also keep in mind how this salary will be viewed internally. It needs to be fair in the context of the responsibilities and experience required to do this job versus others. Step 4. Set the pay for performance components. Much of the management literature out there will advise adding a pay-for-performance component to all types of jobs. The thinking goes that paying a bonus when a particular goal or set of goals are reached is a great way to align workers' interests with that of the company. I would caution you to be careful with this approach, however, as research has shown over and over again that performance-based pay often has the opposite of its intended effect. This is shown to be especially true with knowledge workers who are not performing a predefined set of tasks 
and where creativity is a large part of their jobs. For these types of workers, providing them with autonomy, mastery, and purpose have proved much superior motivators to performance-based pay. Dan Pink has re recently written a very popular book called Drive, which summarizes the research of those like Herzberg, and which you can see an overview in the TED Talk he gave, which I've included a link to in the resources link below this video. For those that would still like to implement a performance-based pay program, it is important to consider all the factors that come into play. For example, if you pay for the acquisition of new clients without a customer service component to the performance benchmark, then client retention will likely suffer. Here are examples of the types of things you may want to benchmark against. Improving processes and or results. Enhancing customer satisfaction. Formulating and implementing new products or protocols. Providing innovation and cost savings to operational methods. Performing at a significantly higher level of complexity for a specified period of time due to workload demand or similar circumstance. For more on performance-based pay, including how to decide whether to pay salespeople by bonus or commission, see the resources link below this video. Step 5. Raises. Once you have your base levels of compensation set for each level of employee, you want to budget for raises to reward your top performers and to make sure that your salaries keep pace with inflation. The first thing you want to do when budgeting for raises is to make sure that your job descriptions and salary ranges for each position are up to date. See steps 1 and 2 for this. If your salary ranges have become outdated, then you may need to factor in an across-the-board raise to get your employees back in line with the competition. Once you've made sure that your pay is fair in the context of how much those that compete for your same pool of talent are paying, you want to make sure that the pay is fair internally as well. To do this, rank the employees who fall under each job category from best to worst performer and make sure no one is being paid unfairly in relation to their peers. Once your pay practices are in line from both an internal and external standpoint, you can look at rewarding your top performers with raises. It is important to give raises at the same time that performance reviews are given. This makes it so employees understand that there is a well thought out process behind the raise and that they are not just being given on a whim. Keep in mind that it is about percentages and not total dollar amount. Anywhere from 0 to 5% is the norm for most companies and companies rarely raise someone more than 10% in any one year. For an in-depth overview of how to handle raises, see the article from bizfilings.com included in the resources link below this video. What's the bottom line? The five steps just outlined are designed to give you a step-by-step -step process that any company can follow to design the pay portion of their compensation package. Once you have your package designed, give it one final check over to make sure it meets the following points. Is it simple and easy for everyone to understand? Does it align employee, client, and owner interests? Will it be seen as fair by the employee when comparing similar jobs both internally and externally? Do you have questions about paying employees that have not been addressed in this video? What positive or negative experience have you had when paying employees? For more great advice on how to start and run a successful small business, be sure to visit us at fitsmallbusiness.com today. Thanks for watching.